again. Okay, so we're figuring out how we're going to factor by grouping. It's one of the last things that we're going to talk about when we're talking about factoring polynomials. So the first thing is we're going to do is um, understand how factor by grouping works. So factor by grouping I'm going to refer to as FBG, and that just stands for factor by grouping. It's a shorthand way of writing it. And we're going to factor by grouping when we have, this is the important part, four terms. So whenever you see four terms, we're going to think about factor by grouping. Okay, so a good question you could ask yourself on the left-hand side is what? What is a good question you could ask yourself on the left-hand side? That's a great one. He says, how many terms do you need? How many terms do you need? Do you need to factor by grouping? Okay, so the answer is how many? You need four terms to factor by grouping. Awesome. So here's the general idea. Okay. The general idea says that, let's say I give you this. Let's say I give you 3x times x plus 2. And let's say I give you minus 2 times x plus 2. All right. Now, this doesn't necessarily have four terms. We're going to get to that a little bit later. But... I want to ask you, do you see anything in common between these two terms? <coughs> Excuse me. They have an x plus 2. This piece right here and this piece right here. These two binomials, they match. You guys agree with that? Okay, so if they match, that means I can pull one of them out, and that will give me an x plus 2. Does anybody see the other term hidden somewhere? What is it? Say it. Yeah, do you see the 3x and the minus 2? That is the other answer. That is my other binomial. That piece goes here. So what does this remind you of? Yeah, this reminds you of it's splitting that middle term, right? And we're the last step in trying to figure out how to split that middle term when you're trying to get those two terms to match. Let me give you another one really quick. See if you can catch on. So if I gave you y squared times y minus 4 plus 3 times uh, 4 minus y. Okay, so now take a look at this one. looks a little different, right? Are these the same? Is this piece the same as this piece? Is it? All right, look, look carefully. Are they the same? No, they're not the same, okay? But is there something that you could do, could you multiply to make them the same? Do you notice that the y over here is positive and the y over there is negative and the f yes she's right on top of it. it says well if you multiply by negative one then you'd be you'd have it so if i had y squared times y minus four if i multiplied you know this whole piece by a negative one then i could factor out a negative three and that would leave me with a y minus four okay now if you don't believe me here's what here's what you we can do to check Ask yourself, what is 3 times 4? That's a positive 12, yeah? And what's a 3 times a negative y? A negative 3y. So do I have those same terms here? What's a negative 3 times a y? A negative 3y. So that matches up. And what's a negative 3 times a negative 4? A positive 12, so that matches up. So are, have I changed the value of my binomial there? No, I haven't. I've just done a really cool trick that will allow me to see that now this binomial and this binomial, they are what, everybody? They are the same. And if they are the same, we can factor them out together. So one of my terms has to be y minus 4. What does the other term have to be, everybody? There you go, y squared minus 3. The other two terms right here, y squared minus 3. So there's my answer, y squared minus 3. FBG. So we're going to factor by grouping. So let's talk about, uh, we're going to factor this one. Here's part A. It's going to say y to the third plus 7y squared plus 2y plus 14. Okay. Ooh, man. Let's go through our factoring flow chart really quickly. Can we factor out a greatest common factor? No. Is it a binomial? No. Is it a trinomial? No. Okay, how many terms do you see? Yes, we have four terms. We have one, two, three, and four. We have four terms. 
Whenever we see four terms, what are we going to think about? Say again? And what does FBG stand for? Factor by grouping. So think about this. We're going to group the first two terms, and we're going to group the last two terms. Does this look familiar to you? Yes, this is the last step of factoring out using the diamond problem when the leading coefficient is not a 1. Okay, now, just focus on this binomial for one second. Is there, what's the greatest common factor you can take out of a y cubed and a 7y squared? What would it be? Yes, a y squared. What would that leave you with? y plus 7. Good. So now, ladies and gentlemen, what are you aiming for in the second binomial? Yeah, you guys totally get it. So does anybody see a y plus 7 hidden in there somewhere? Yeah, if you factor out a what? I can't factor out a 7. I can factor out a 2, though, right? What does that leave me with? Y plus 7. Awesome. Now, do these match up? If they match up, what are you allowed to do? Finish the job. Yeah, okay. So that's y plus 7. And what's the other factor? y squared plus 2. And All right, we got y squared plus 2y plus yx plus 2x. Okay. How many terms do you see here? Yeah, I've got this term. One, two, three. I have four terms total, correct? So if I have four terms, what am I thinking about? Factoring by grouping. Good. So I'm going to group the first two, and I'm going to group the last two. Okay? Now, just taking a look at this first group here, I have a y squared plus 2y. What can I take out of a y squared plus 2 What's the greatest common factor? y. Very good. What does that leave me with? y plus 2. Very good. So what are you looking for in the second term? You're looking for a y plus 2. Anybody see it hidden in there somewhere? Yes, what can I factor out of the second term then? 1x, very good. I love that somebody said 1x. What's that leave me with? A y plus 2. And do these match? And are we stoked that they match? No, we are stoked that they match. That means we're doing something right. So that gives me with y plus 2. What's the other binomial? y plus x, very good. y plus x, 4x squared, okay. I want you to uh, work on that one. See if you can factor by grouping by yourself. Talk to your neighbor. Talk okay, so some of you are still working on that. Some of you have an answer, but we're noticing right away that x cubed and 12, there's nothing you can take out to make it match. So we have to rearrange these terms. Anybody rearrange them in a way that was useful for them? Yeah, what would you get, Anthony? X cubed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what do we call this order right here? What's this called, everybody? That's called standard form. How do you know? That's right. We have the we have the um, exponents lined up from greatest to least. Okay. Now that we have this going on for ourselves, we can factor by grouping. Let's group those two and let's group these two. What can I pull out of that first binomial right here? What can I pull out from this? I can pull out an x squared. Good. What does that leave me with? x minus 4. Good job. What can I pull out of this next one here? That binomial right there. A 3. What would that leave me with? An x minus 4. Awesome. Are we? Uh, did we do it right? Did these match up? If they match up, what can we do then? Right x minus 4. What's the other term that I have? x squared plus 3. So x squared plus 3. So the answer should be x squared plus 3 times... And the last one we're going to solve. Okay, um, we're going to factor completely here. So we're going to do um, this one. We're going to do a. It's going to be x squared plus 3x minus 1. Okay, let's go through the flow chart together. Um, can we factor out the greatest common factor, yes or no? Uh, yes or no? No, there's no common factor besides one. Is it a binomial, yes or no? No. Is it a trinomial, yes or no? Yes. Is the leading coefficient one? Yes. What do we do? Diamond problem. Very good. Okay, diamond problem goes here, diamond problem goes there. What number goes on the top? 
negative 1. What number goes in the bottom? A 3. Okay, I have a negative on the top. I have a positive on the bottom. So a positive here and a negative here. And which one has to be bigger? This one has to be bigger. Very good. Okay. Well, how do I figure out what numbers go there? The factors of what? The factors of a 1. What are the factors of 1? 1 and 1. 1 and 1. Is there any way I can create a 3 out of a 1 and a 1? No. So you know what we call this? We call this prime. Yeah, we call this prime. Sometimes there are polynomials out there that cannot be factored. So we call them prime. So that would be a great question to ask yourself. What do we call polynomials that we cannot factor? Let's write that part down. What do we call polynomials we can't factor? What is the name of them? And the answer should be right there for you. Okay, what's the name of them? It's all called prime. Very good. Okay, let's try this one. What if I gave you this? 9x to the 4th minus 4x squared. All right, let's go through our factoring flow chart. Can we take out a greatest common factor? Uh, yes, what is the greatest common factor? x squared. Very good. What's that leave us with? 9x squared minus 4. Very good. Okay, now, after we've done that, is this part a binomial? Yes. Is it in the form of a squared minus b squared? Yes, it is. It's in the form of a squared minus b squared. Okay? So this is like 3x all being squared. And what number do I have to square to get 4? 2 all being squared. So how does a squared minus b squared, how does it factor? Look on the factoring flow chart. Tell me what it's going to be. Look on that flow chart. Who can find it? a squared minus b squared factors to... There it is, dude. A plus B times A minus B. So what's the value of A in my particular problem? What is the value of A? 3X. Very good. What's the value of B? 2. Just the 2. Not the square part. See, notice how none of these are squared right here, right? None of them are squared. So here's what I have. I have X squared from the outside piece. Then I have a product of two binomials. And according to my factoring flow chart, it just says I will have 3x plus 2 and 3x minus 2. And that's my answer. All right? That was a tough one. But you've got to use that flow chart to make 3x. Okay, so this one says solve now, not just factor. So that means we have to have an equal sign on it, and we're going to have to get all our variables to one side and then factor out and use the zero product property. So... What should we do first? I have 5x to the third minus 25x squared equals negative 30x. I'm trying to, to solve this particular problem. What do you think, Cody? Um, add yes. He says add 30x to both sides. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to write down. we got 5x squared minus 25x squared plus 30x equals what now? Zero. zero. It's very important. You want to get that zero on the other side there because then you can use a zero product property in just a minute. Okay, now let's just look at this piece here. Let's just look at our polynomial. Can I factor out the greatest common factor? Yes, yes what would it be? 5x. 5x, very good. What would that leave me with? x minus 5x. Oh, this is a 3. I'm so sorry. This should be x. This is a, that's a 3 right there. So that should be x squared minus 5x plus what? Plus 6. Very good equals zero. Okay, now we're focusing here. Is Can we factor out the greatest common factor? No, we already did that. Can Is it a binomial? No. Is it a trinomial? Yes. Is the leading coefficient a one? Yes. So we're going to use a diamond problem. What number goes on the top? What number goes on the bottom? Okay, I have a positive up top. I have a negative down below. So that means both of them have to be what? Negative. So what's it going to be, you guys? 3 and 2, good, 3 and a 2. So that leaves me with this, 5x, and then I have an x minus 3, and now I have an x minus 2. And that still equals 0. 
So everything that was highlighted in yellow above became this because we factored it. Does that make sense? Are you guys still with me? Okay, so now check it out. I have a number times a number times another number equals zero. If I multiply three numbers together to equal zero, what does that mean? It means that, what's the zero product property say? That what is the, what's, remind ourselves, what's the zero, if A times B equals zero, what does that mean? If two numbers multiply together to equal zero, what does that mean about one of the numbers? One of them has to be zero. Either A is zero or B is zero. Now, if I add another term, if I have C, does it make any difference? No, or C is zero. So that's what we're doing here. So either 5X has to equal zero, or X minus 3 has to equal zero, or X minus 2 has to equal zero. It's got to be one of these situations because that's what the zero product property says. So I'm going to solve each little individual problem. So I divide by 5, divide by 5. So X has to be zero. That's one of my answers. X could be 3 if I just add 3 to both sides. So X could be 3. Or if I add 2 to both sides, then X could be 2. So there are three answers that work. And the answers are 0, 3, or positive 2. We have three answers. All right.